Hi there, my name is John Palfrey and I'm the chairman of the steering committee of the Digital Public Library of America process and I wanted just to give a brief update on where things stood with the DPLA through this video from Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's the very end of June 2011 and there are two things that I wanted to report out on. One is the overall DPLA process and second the substance of what the DPLA may emerge into, what it may be. Um, so as to the process, the most recent uh, developments have been the very exciting feedback we've gotten from our beta sprint announcement. In May, we urged anyone who wished to build part of the DPLA to send us a letter of intent that they would be building something for our beta sprint over the course of the summer. As of June 15th, the uh, due date for this, we had 66 zero applications or notices that people would be submitting to the beta sprint. All these beta sprint uh, uh, proposals and uh, and uh, code and so forth are due on September the 1st, 2011. I'm extremely eager to see what we get from these 60 submissions and extremely grateful to all those people who have agreed to work on it and presumably sprinting right now. Many of these are partnerships among public and private libraries and there are uh, big federal agencies involved and individuals involved and uh, big um, uh, institutions like Internet Archive. It's going to be fabulous and we're very grateful to everybody who's working on it right now. What's going to happen thereafter is we'll have an external review board who will take a peek at these uh, submissions and we'll spend some time pushing them around and will then help us to make selections of some of these beta sprinters to present at what we plan to be a big tent meeting in Washington DC. The date is set nominally for October the 21st for this big tent meeting. It's going to be hosted at the National Archives, which I'm personally very excited about. The Archivist of the United States, David Ferriero, very generously is hosting us there and will be uh, uh, convening this event. It'll be a publicly available event and we'll webcast it and so forth. And the idea will be to present some of these beta sprints to show people what a DPLA could be and also to plan for the next steps thereafter. Our game plan is that it'll be 18 months roughly after that kickoff in October until we have a prototype. That's the game plan as of now. So something like the spring of 2013 there will be a DPLA and that's the idea. Obviously much stands between here and there in terms of hard work and building consensus and talking to lots of people and raising money and so forth, but I'm confident that we're on a great track for it. Second, I wanted to give a few words about what the DPLA is and where it might be headed as a substantive matter. This is something that we have very carefully been trying to uh, uh, do as a process as opposed to having a clear sense of what it might be. Um, and so I just want to give a snapshot. Basically, back in October of 2010, a group of about 30 people came together and agreed upon a sentence, a sentence about what a DPLA could be. And by March of last year, we had worked with a slightly broader group and came up with a four-page concept note, which is up on the DPLA wiki. If you're interested in that, just Google DPLA wiki and you'll come up with it. Uh, and the concept note on there builds it out a little bit more articulately. Um, and uh, I think we're now at a point where I'm coming into, it's coming into focus, at least for me, that there'll be five elements of a DPLA. The first element is, of course, that there'll be content. There'll be some information in a DPLA. This could take the form of books. It could be images, moving images, audio files, and so forth. So it's not just books. I'm thinking that the initial Digital Public Library of America will be something on the order of 10 million objects. Think about it at that uh, order of magnitude. Who knows, it may be more or less, but the idea is a very big library. It's not meant to be the biggest ever library, but initially I think it will have a, a, a large scale critical mass and uh, 10 million objects is, is just a goal. You could imagine drawing upon lots of things in the public domain that have already been digitized by the Library of Congress, by many different partners within the DPLA, which are uh, public libraries, academic libraries, and so forth. But there would be a corpus of information. This would be made available on a free-to-all basis. I'm thinking about the words above the Boston Public Library as you walk in, that beautiful inscription that says free to all. So the notion would be however we obtain the rights to them, and we'll obviously do this entirely lawfully, from the end user perspective, the content will always be free um, as it would be at a public library. Second, this will be metadata. So the second element of the DPLA is there will be information about the information. There will be things like catalog records, circulation data, reviews, and so forth that describe and make findable and useful uh, the information in the, the content part. 
My sense is this will be as open as we possibly can make it. I believe in open access to metadata. We've been very interested in and working with people who are focused on linked open data, interoperability among data. This may also be a way that we can connect the DPLA with the Europeana effort at this metadata layer. You can imagine a server that hosts all of this metadata and people can use it for various purposes. Third, there will be code that is part of the DPLA. This will be open source code wherever possible so that people can in fact make their own little DPLAs. So if, let's imagine that we've got the large DPLA.org which is a place where people can come and get access to this information with a certain kind of interface. But we would imagine the code being such that somebody could make their own version of a DPLA perhaps for a specific public library or for a particular historical society. Uh, or for a particular academic library or K-12 environment. So people could take the code, take that content, take that metadata, and form it into their own uh, library. So it'll be a resource for all of these different parties. Fourth, there'll be very open and easy to use tools and services. So one thing that we recognize is not every library, and certainly not every uh, library of every size, has technical people on staff who could take open source code and do something with it off of, say, SourceForge. That would be nice if everybody could, but um, we know that we'll have to make tools and services that are somewhat simpler to use and that allow people very easily to curate a collection or to create a DPLA or a, a digital public library for a town or for a historic society. You can imagine it also taking the form of mobile scanning operations. So you could imagine uh, a project I like the name of, the Scanabago, which I've heard some people talk about, driving Winnebago's across uh, certain areas, going to historical societies, going to local libraries, and helping people to scan materials that might be of local interest, have them fold up into the DPLA, but also be cura um, curated locally as part of a local collection that otherwise might not get put into a digital collection. So the fourth is open tools and services that make it very easy for people to use and to, um, to be a support system for uh, the public libraries and uh, others who are doing cultural heritage work in America. And then fifth, it's a community. I see this very much as something that's emerging in a way like Wikipedia, which I think is a great model in some ways, maybe like the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force. These are obviously slightly different communities, but in both cases, these are open uh, processes to the extent possible that allow people to participate broadly and overall that we have a very large group of volunteers who are coming together to create the DPLA. I foresee a very lightweight structure, something that doesn't grow into um, a large-scale heavyweight organization, but rather something highly distributed where lots of people can see themselves participating and succeeding in it. Um, I like the idea of a Wikimania style event once a year where people interested in the DPLA might come together um, and uh, hang out and work on uh, projects related to the DPLA and then go back to their uh, relevant libraries or communities and so forth th for the rest of the time through a volunteer mode. So there will be a community built around the DPLA and I think the very active group that's already on the wiki and the listserv um, and those who have already uh, agreed to submit as part of the beta sprint, those 60 sprinters, I see the beginnings of that community where people share this ideal of creating a free to all, free for all um, American library of this sort. So that's the basic uh, update on the DPLA. I wanted just to share the current thoughts as of this last day of June 2011 and very grateful for your interest and attention um, with respect to this project. If you have anything that you would like to let us know, please um, contact us. The, the Secretariat of the DPLA is based at the Berkman Center for Internet and Society at Harvard University. We're, I think, easily found on the web, and please do send us a note or give us a call if you'd like to be involved one way or another. Thanks so much.